Okay, welcome to today's video, uh, where we're going to talk about what is a dev board. Um, got the idea for the video from a, a poll I did. I, I was joking uh, in the poll. I, I had a couple of options. I, I want to buy some new dev boards. I wasn't sure uh, what people would be interested in seeing on the channel. So I asked in a poll, like, hey, you know, what 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 dev board would you like to see on the channel next? And I also put, what is a dev board? And I got a couple of responses to it. I'm sure they were just joking and trolling, but uh, after some thought, I was like, you know, this actually is a question worth answering of what is a dev board? Because most of my viewer base, they're not programmers. They're not designing circuit boards. They're, they like to repair circuit boards. Um, and I, I would like to inspire some of you guys to get into messing with these development boards and making your projects because a lot of you guys email me and you have excellent ideas. You're like, hey, I want to do something with this particular protocol. There's not a good tool on the market for it. Uh, so how could I do this? And, and you know, I, I don't have an answer to everybody's question because I, I just, I'm not an all-knowing source of embedded programming. I'm, I'm not very good at it. I, I do all of my programming in C++. Uh, I like working with that. I know a lot of people don't like working with it, uh, but I like it because it's simple, it's elegant looking in my opinion, and, and it works. Uh, I don't want to spend all day in C and have to, you know, address all the memory and, and set it. it's just not not fun for me i'd rather just be getting my project done so i like c plus plus i understand the compiler is a little bit more bloated and it's going to take up a couple of more kilobytes of ram and flash but i mean what's a couple of kilobytes now when you can get a whole meg uh of of flash and your program you wrote took up 33 kilobytes and this because you used an rtos and it took up so much room um <laughs> let's let's not get into our tosses or any of that kind of stuff in this video let's just focus on what a development board is so uh short answer is a development board is something you can program um more long and accurate answer uh you, you have three things you really need to make it a development board you need to be able to power it up you need to be able to program it not not necessarily saying that the uh in circuit programmer needs to be part of the circuit board. You just need to have the the I/O there that you can use to program it. So it needs to have some pins that you can program from, um, and then it needs to have a microcontroller of of sorts on there. Um, or it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a microcontroller. You could have a microprocessor or a system on chip. Uh, so examples of of these just real world examples that people would be familiar with. Uh, so the traditional Raspberry Pi, that is a uh, system on board or single board computer or single board system. Those are all names for, for the same thing, uh, development board. Uh, and then you have the Raspberry Pi Zero, that is a system on chip development board. Uh, so the entire computer is just one chip on there. Uh, and then it's got a d dev board to it. And then you have your Raspberry uh, Pico, which is a microcontroller dev board. So those are kind of your full spectrum there. I, I, I left out microprocessor because those really aren't common anymore. So like your Intel 8085 would be an example of a, a microprocessor instead of a microcontroller. Uh, I'm not going to get into the difference in the, the two, but just giving you an example of, of what... what what a, um, th there are dev boards of microprocessors out there. I'm just not familiar with any of them, so I can't give you an example of a microprocessor dev board that's specific to that that genre. So that's what a dev board is. That's, that's, that's kind of like the quick down and dirty of like what a dev board is. Uh, there's a lot of different architectures to the dev boards. So you, you know, you, you have your Arduinos, which are mostly, um, at mega chips on there. And then you have your STM 32s, which is a really broad spectrum of ST products because they've kind of kept the same footprint with a lot of their stuff. So they have a lot of different chips that go on the, the same kind of dev boards. You have the blue pill, which is like kind of commonly um, pirated. Uh, I, I'd say uh, it's, it's a copy. It, it'll generally have clone chips on them. I use a lot of those. Uh, cause they're cheap. And then you have, they, they have a bunch of other series from STM. Um, 
So yeah, you have your Arduinos, your STMs, and then every manufacturer has their own um, dev boards. I could go all night listing them, but those are really your, your common ones are like your Teen C, your STM, your ESP32. All of those are, are your really common ones. Uh, and, and all of them will have different ones. But I think for the beginner, for, for somebody just getting started out, they've never done any microcontroller at all, that you have really one of two options. Either um, sink or swim dive in and buy an STM32, or dip your toes in and get started with an Arduino. And I think getting started with an Arduino is the best option. Um, the STM32s though, you can absolutely start with them. Um, it's just a little bit more, a um, little faster learning curve to it. Uh, it. It all has the same learning curve. Uh, well, it all is the same stuff you have to learn, but um, it's a little bit steeper uh, with the STM32s. You're, you're going to have to grasp a couple of concepts a little bit faster, uh, but it's still all there because you can still use the Arduino IDE to program a STM32. So you, you don't have to go like bare metal jumping into this and, and really struggle. Uh, you, you can still start out pretty soft with an STM32. The, the ESP32s, uh, same boat. I don't have any experience with them though, so I can't speak to them. So I, that's why I'd say STM32 or Arduino, uh, but that's just because that's where my experience lies with them. Uh, if I had started somewhere else, if I'd started in the embed studio, I may be suggesting that, but I didn't start there. So uh, that's my suggestion. But the, a couple of reasons why I really think the Arduino uh, is a great way to get started is first of all, Arduinos come with shields, which we'll get into that here in a minute of what a shield or a module is. Uh, but they, they come with, uh, a lot of them come in kits that come with all these things and they have projects you can do. So you just get started right away doing some of these projects and learning how to do some of the coding right there with the projects you, you know, you're copying, pasting if you're not trying to learn it, or you can go through the actual PDF and pro write, type out the code yourself. So that way you, you get some muscle memory and learned some of the things along. Uh, but here, let me reach over here. But yeah, so here are like some Arduino Unos. And this is another reason why I think Arduino Unos are great for beginners is so uh, this one, as you can see, the socket is empty on it. Uh, this is because I sent 12 volts to one of the data lines on accident. I was wiring it up wrong. And I, I just fried it. Uh, and these are great because it's socketed so I can replace it. I'll probably do a video in the future on replacing it. So yeah, if, if you kill a couple of microcontrollers, which if you who are working on automotive stuff with 12 volts around, it's quite likely that you'll do that. Or if you, you know, set it down on something, uh, pretty likely that you're going to damage it. So yeah, your Arduino Uno uh, is a excellent place to start out because it's a socketed chip. It comes with shields, which we'll get into here in a moment. And all of your in-circuit programming is done on the board, so you don't need anything special. You plug in the USB port and you're already, you know, good to go in, um, in the uh, Arduino IDE or the, the studio for it. Um, so same with your embed, most of your embed chips uh, that you don't need a... Uh, well, they're not chips. Uh, embed doesn't make a chip. It's, you know, they're development boards for the studio. Um, generally you just USB plug it in and it's, it's ready to go. Um, no, no need for your in circuit programmer, which we'll take a look at in circuit programmers here in a second too. Uh, so you can see what they are. Um, so yeah, let's move the camera up and take a look at some of this stuff and go from there. Okay. So let's, uh, take a look at some of this nomenclature real quick. Uh, so first one I'm going to show you is a module. So this one is a CAN bus module. It has a couple of chips on here and it is not set up to uh, sit on top of the art development board. Um, and so that's how you can tell it's a module. And this module is not set up to be in a breadboard because it's got all the pins going up like that. Now, this module would be set up to go in a breadboard. It would just sit upright like that, but it goes in a breadboard. Uh, th now you can always change one of these that are not made for a breadboard to work in a breadboard. All that you do, take this header off, flip it over, solder it back down. So it, it's not like you're forced to not work with it, just the way it came from the factory, uh, not made for a breadboard. 
So then your next one you have is your shield. And we, we have two different style shields here for two different development boards. They're both the same thing. These are, these are both CNC shields for making like a CNC machine or a 3D printer or something of that nature. Um, so this one is for an Arduino Uno. So it sits on top of it just like this. Just goes, it lines up the first pins, the bottom one on these. Just goes like that and just sits right on top of it. That's so that is a shield, and this is a shield for an Arduino Nano where the it sits on top of it like that. So it's underneath, sits on top. Um, so those are your shields, and then your next thing that you need to be familiar with if you're getting out of the Arduino world are your. Um, would be your in-circuit programmers. So this is a J-Link. It is a in-circuit programmer, the EDU version, uh, which is for people that are just learning or in school, um, is only like $80. Um, the, the full on like commercial J-Link is like 300 to $800, depending on what licensing uh, you're getting with it. So. Uh, definitely, uh, if you're if you're in an educational setting or you're not using it for commercial use, uh, this is an excellent tool. Uh, and then another one is over here. Um, this this one is a ST Link uh, version two. It's probably not genuine. Um, came came with some of these S, uh, STM thirty twos that I've purchased in the past. Uh, so yeah. They, as I was talking about before, you have um, modules that are made for breadboards that just sit in here, like this one. This one is a just a CAN transceiver. The STM32s, they support CAN at the silicon level. Um, not all of them, but most of them do. Um, so yeah, I just need a transceiver with this. I don't need the um, uh, CAN chip, because that's the CAN chip, that's a transceiver. This is actually the same transceiver. These both have the same transceiver on it. Um, and then this is just a uh, stepper motor uh, chip right here. It's a it's a H bridge stepper driver. Um, so yeah, that it's kind of your your general layout there um, of what you need. So some dev boards like this, you program them with a in circuit programmer. While an Arduino, it just programs through serial, so you can just uh, plug it into the computer. Now, these STM32s, they can also be, be uh, programmed with serial. All that you do is put it in boot mo bootloader 1, power it up, and then wire in your uh, serial connection to it. So, um, so, th so that's, that's how you do that. Um, but you can leave it in boot, boot mode 0 and uh, program it with uh, any of these um, in-circuit programmers. So, so the, the J-Link or the, the uh, ST-Link can, can do that. Um, I'm doing it via uh, the serial wire debug, so the S SWD debug. The, these do also have JTAG uh, for the STM32s. Uh, well, some of the STM32s, however, I don't believe the pins are all available for, for doing that with these. Uh, a lot of these microcontrollers have more pins than your uh, output. So like, uh, let me show it here. Like the embed um, 005.1, um, it had this, this NPX microcontroller on here has a lot more pins than you actually have the GPIO of, um, you know, they just, didn't they, they didn't make them all available. They also used a lot of them on here because uh, this this is a really old um, dev board. It's from, well, when I say very old, it's from like 2009. Um, so yeah, not, not the newest design uh, dev board. And it's back from when Embed was still proprietary. Embed has now gone open source with most of their stuff. So, here we go. Uh, so most of their stuff doesn't come with this anymore, but this is a embed interface chip on here that's proprietary. Um, they, whatever the chip was, they just grind it off and then put their own uh, mark on there. I'm sure it's out there on the internet of what it was, uh, but they don't use it any, anymore in any, any of their new products, uh, I don't believe. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, th there's a lot of the 
uh, pins are already used on here and some of them are available they just go to like the LEDs so there's four LEDs on here and they all have their own pin to the microcontroller and stuff like that so uh, yeah not all of them have have everything available to it um, and if you just want to see what's going on with this project uh, working on uh, I'm working on making my own uh, mint menu interface right now. So the first step was to get the rotary encoder and the LCD working. I have got them working. So there you go. Delta is, is it rotating through it? And then count is just me clicking the button here. Um, so yeah, it, making progress on a project here in the embed studio. Over here is the open source um, uh, gauge pod that I've been working on. I think I might actually have a company that's interested in uh, tying this project into a product line that they sell, uh, which would be pretty exciting there. I, I don't know if I want to just license the, the design to them or, or what, but yeah, it is a, a open source design going on there. So yeah, that pretty much... Uh, goes over all the nomenclature here. Okay guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully I didn't ramble on too much about what a microcontroller is. I know it's kind of a boring topic, but it's definitely a question worth answering because there are people out there that don't know what a dev board is and, and don't know where to get started. And I want you guys to get started, start making your projects. I know you guys have excellent ideas. Um, just, you know, stick to it. I, I want to see your projects. Once you start getting them done, you know, put them in our Facebook group, the Automotive Circuit Board Repair Technicians Facebook group. So yeah, that's a mouthful to say, but link will be down in the description for the Facebook group. Um, please answer the questions or I'm just going to deny, uh, or the other moderators are just going to deny your response to it. If you have to use Google to get the answer to the questions, that's okay. But yeah, answer the questions to, to join the group where your thing will get denied. Because I've had a lot of spam bots come in there and, you know, try to sell people crap. So yeah, uh, just, just be aware of that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope, yeah, like I said, didn't ramble on too long. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one.